What's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. For those of you who are new, my name is Megan. Thank you so much for joining me. I really wanted to do a fall bridal look, but I wanted something that was going to be suitable for those of you who want a more dramatic look or also want a really natural look. So in this video, I give you two different options for lips, which can completely change the look of the makeup overall. So hopefully you guys enjoy. All the products will be linked for you guys down below as always. Okay, so let's jump into it. Just washed my hair today for the first time in like a week. Oh. Clean hair is the best. Okay, so on your wedding day, one of the most important things is going to be your skin. So your foundation, your concealer, all of those things are gonna be so important because you want your skin to be perfect, you want your skin to be like smooth and glowing and healthy looking, so the best way to do that is to make sure you have really good skincare prep leading up to your wedding. I have a blog on that which I will link for you guys down below. But also on the day of your wedding, make sure you use a good moisturizer, one that goes well with makeup. Likely if you have a makeup artist hire, they will bring a moisturizer that they like to use underneath makeup. I always bring one, which I did talk about in one of my videos last week, which I will link somewhere on the screen for you guys, but I think that it's important just in case to have your own. I really like the Murad Skin Perfecting Lotion. This is great for people who have normal to oily skin. They do have some great options for people with dry skin as well. I really like this one because it's not too thick and it's not going to interfere with like the primer or the foundation that we use. You just want something that your skin is gonna really drink up and for me, it's this one. This is also great for regular use because it helps with pimples, uh, which you can see I've got a couple going on here, so I need some help. I haven't been taking very good care of my skin. So also, you wanna make sure that you don't skip eye cream. Everyone over the age of 18 should be using an eye cream every day. I've said this before, I will keep saying it. So many people don't use an eye cream and they'll say, oh, you know, my under eyes are so dry or, you know, I find that I'm getting wrinkles, like, and I feel like I'm too young for wrinkles. Everybody feels like they're too young for wrinkles, me included. But I just feel like not enough people use an eye cream, and especially one that's going to, you know, like, prep your skin for makeup. So I really like this one, the Clinique Repair Wear Laser Focus Wrinkle Correcting Eye Cream. Been using this for a long time. This really does correct wrinkles. Uh, this is my favorite eye cream I've ever tried. I just can't say enough good things about it. Uh, when I stop using it, my wrinkles do come back. I will say that. That's one thing I don't like. It's not a permanent fix. It's not Botox. I mean, Botox isn't even permanent. So I always just put this all around the eye area. I do put it on my eyelids as well. And I love it. You don't need a lot. But this is just... Ugh. It's my, probably my favorite skincare product and it's one thing that I never change because I don't believe that I'll ever find one that I like as much as that. So... So also make sure that you've been taking care of your lips. You're going to be doing a lot of kissing on that day and if you are going to be wearing a lipstick, like something that's going to stay on or whatever, no matter what color it is, it's going to look better if your lips are in good condition. So leading up to your wedding, make sure you're moisturizing your lips, but on the day of and the night before, like dose them because dry lips do not go with any kind of lips because they'll just look more plump, they won't be flaking, they are flaking. Take a little bit of honey and brown sugar and rub it all over your lips. When it comes to primer, everybody's primer needs are gonna be different. If you are like me and you're normal to oily, my favorite primer of all time is the Temp2 Base Smooth and Matte Primer. Just make sure that if you're using a primer that it's something that goes with your skin type. So if you are dry, make sure you're using a hydrating primer. If you're oily and you have big pores, make sure you're using something that's gonna smooth out any texture, control oil, and fill in your pores. So I'm gonna start off with this one. And I start on the cheeks because that's where I need the most of like the texture correcting. And then I will spread it over my nose and then my forehead, my chin, you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm also gonna go in with Benefit Professional. This is great for filling in pores. I find if you use too much of this, it really doesn't work. And I'm just like pushing it into the skin, if you guys can see. Okay, so I broke out my own kit for this video because I wanna use the foundation that I actually would recommend to you guys. So I'm gonna mix regular Prolong Wear and Prolong Wear Waterproof. This color is NC20, this color is NC25. I think it might be a little dark, but it's okay. I'm just squirting that on the back of my hand. Okay, so I'm using probably about that amount. Just gonna mix the two together. All right. I think this is a good color. And I love these two foundations mixed together because I find that the regular Prolong Wear is really dry, especially on application. 
uh, but I find that the Pro Longwear Waterproof just doesn't work for me. I, I don't know why, but it's better for dry skin, I guess that's why. So I'm going to use my Real Technique sponge, and I don't have a whole lot of coverage on here, so I might have to add some more. Whenever you apply with a sponge, it does sort of suck up some of your product. Lately I've been finding I need a lot of coverage right up here because my head is just like so dry from this gross weather we've been having. <laughs> this color is good. It's a little gold. It's oxidizing just a little bit. So it's a little dark, but we're going to go with it. I haven't worn either of these foundations myself in a while. Forgot how good they are. I mean, I use them on other people so I know that they're good, but you know what I mean. So anything that you're putting on your skin, make sure that it's long wearing because it's going to be a long day. You probably will start getting ready very early in the morning and you will not be going to bed until very late at night. So you want to make sure that you have something that's as low maintenance as possible. I like to use the Pro Longwear foundations, but also I really like to use anything that's long wearing. The MAC concealers I find are the ones that last the longest on me personally, and I've heard the same from my clients. So I use either the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, which you guys know I love, but I also just started trying this MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. This is beautiful. I find the coverage on this one not as good as the Pro Longwear, but a friend of mine says the opposite. So my suggestion would be to get a sample of both and try them out before you purchase one to wear on your wedding day. In the Pro Longwear Concealer, I use the color NW20, and in the Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear, I use the color NW24. These ones run a lot lighter. Um, but I do like this texture and where it's really dry out, like I would say if you're getting married in the summer and your skin's oily, go with this one. If you're getting married in the winter, use this one because you're going to need some hydration around your eyes. And anywhere that I need extra coverage, I'm going to put a little bit of this because the coverage is really good. And this is great for acne as well, better than this for acne. So I'm just going to use my Real Technique sponge to pat that in. And this is quite a bit lighter than my foundation, so it's going to brighten me up a little bit, which is great. I always put concealer on my nose because it helps with extra coverage, obviously, but also helps to fill in my pores. There's a couple different options when it comes to setting powder. I'm going to kind of mix both. Um, I'm going to use the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder to set my under eyes, forehead, nose, and chin. And then I will be using the Studio... Fix Perfecting Powder by MAC to set like my cheek area and add some coverage anywhere that I feel like I need coverage. The Laura Mercier powder, the one I'm putting on right now, is translucent, so it's not going to add any more coverage, but where it's my wedding day, uh, I want my coverage to be completely flawless, so I will wear more coverage than I normally would, um, you know, on an everyday type look. Make sense? My advice would be do the best to look like yourself, but also you want to look like your most glamorous self, right? Like it's your wedding day. I'm just going to be using this down my cheeks. It gives like a really nice smooth texture. And does it gives like just enough coverage. I like to tap powder where I need coverage, which is always like around my chin area and a little bit on my nose. A little bit right up here. I just, I, this powder is a really nice finishing powder. I would say if you're one of those people with like annoyingly perfect skin, you could use just this and it like on top of a primer and it would give you that nice kind of like powdered look, you know, but I am not one of those people. So I use this on top of foundation. You can also go with something like this. This is the old packaging for this powder, but this is the Mac mineralized skin finish. These are the ones that I keep in my kit and I use these on a lot of people. I'll get into the powders that I keep in my kit in my next video in that series, but just where we're going through these right now, I thought I would mention this. This is a great setting powder as well. Um, this is the color medium, obviously my summer color. I'm definitely not a medium right now, but uh, I really enjoy these powders and I feel like they pretty much work on every type of skin. So that's why I keep them in my kit because I don't want to have to have powders for dry skin, powders for oily skin. You know what I mean? I'm going to use Paint Really Paint Pot to prime my eyelids. You guys know that this is my favorite eyelid primer. 
So I'm just going to stick that on before I do my brows because I want to be able to get the primer up close to my brow without wiping off like my brow filler, you know? So I'm going to fill in my brows and I will be right back with you guys. Brows are on. Filmed a little brow tutorial for you guys in there, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. I think that will be up before this video. I saw this little uh, Tarte Goddess Glam palette, and this gold color was calling my name. This is it right here. So, what am I going to do here? I think I'm going to do like a lighter gold eye, and then I'm going to do lashes. So I should squirt my glue out right now. So these are the lashes that I always put on people. These are the Demi Wispies by Ardell. And that's what I'm going to use today. So squirt out your glue when you start to do your eyeshadow because you want the glue to get tacky so that you can apply it to the lash and then stick them right on. I cleaned a bunch of brushes today. Just hand cleansed enough for this video because my brushes were nasty. And I feel like you really can't get a good feeling for anything if you have dirty brushes. So I'm going to start with this color right up here. This is called spell and I'm sure these colors are still available through Tarte I don't think that this palette in particular is but you can use anything that's similar you don't have to use the same colors I love Tarte eyeshadows I would definitely wear them on my wedding day because they're a great quality eyeshadow they last for a really really long time so I'm using by the way a Morphe R39 and we're gonna start off by sticking that right in our crease here this is a good like transition color because it's actually not that far off from my own skin tone. And where it's like not that dark, it's okay if you go like a little too high or a little too low because it'll be really easy to disguise a color like this on me anyway. We are then going to take this color right here down at the bottom which is called Throne. Uh, is it? No, royalty. And we're going to keep this on the outside half in the crease. And I'm using circular motions and then windshield wiper motions, but the circular motions I'm using are up and in because we don't want the shadow to fall down here or be moved down there. So don't be afraid to go above the crease especially if you have a deep set eye like myself because that will really open up your eye. Okay, so then I'm taking this Morphe M576. This is my favorite blending brush, it's so soft. And I'm going to soften around the top of that, right on my brow bone, so that it's nice and soft and blended. Okay. Next, I'm taking this ColourPop brush. This is an E1. And I'm going to take this beautiful gold color and put that all over my lid. This is such a gorgeous color. I love it. I love gold, anything gold. But where we've got like the darker color on the outside, we still have that sort of swept up look, you know? So now I am going to take this color right here, the color, darker color we put in our crease, and I'm going to run that along my lower lash line. Just to keep it nice and smoky. Whew, got it in my eye. Okay. I'm going to take my blender brush again and smoke that out even more. Colors like this make blue eyes look so blue. 
Next, I'm going to take this Pixi eyeliner. I don't want to use liquid liner because you guys know that I hate liquid liner. <laughs> so I want to use this liner, but I'm going to need some kind of smudger. This is the Endless Silk, okay. Endless Silky Eye Pen by Pixi in the color Black Cocoa. It's a beautiful, beautiful eyeliner. And I'm going to start on the outside and work my way in with that. You need eyeliner with lashes. It's frustrating unless you're wearing half lashes. I, I really personally feel like you really need liner, um, which kind of takes away like, it doesn't make it look very natural, but it helps the lashes look more natural. And the reason I smudge it is because it helps it to look a little bit more smooth on the eye where my eyes are not 18 year old eyes. They are holding my 33 year old eyes. I'm going to add a little bit of this dark brown color to my lower lash line just to kind of keep that definition there. I don't want to add that dark, dark eye pencil because I feel like that's too intense, but we'll see how it looks when the lashes are on. You can always add it in later, but if I, it would be really hard for me to take it off. Know what I'm saying? It does help your lashes stick to the falsies if you have them curled. Um, my eyelashes are pretty straight, so I feel like I need them to be curled. I'm using my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. If it was really my wedding day, I'd be using something waterproof, but I don't have a waterproof mascara that I use on myself, so any waterproof mascara will do. And it's not just because you can cry, it's because like the wind might blow, somebody might, you know, spill a drink on you, like you don't know. So it's not just, like if you're not a crier, still please wear waterproof mascara on your wedding day. Okay, I'm gonna pop these lashes on. On to the rest of the face. I am going to use a better contour than I normally do. So I'm gonna grab this Tartist, lots of Tarte in this video, I love Tarte. Tartist Pro Glow Palette. I'm gonna use the powder over here, Sculpt. This is a little darkish for me right now. If it was the summer, it would be fine. Start at the back, don't push too hard. Oh yeah. Such a good color, because it's just gray enough, but it's like warm, so it's perfect for this look. And I'm using a MAC, what is this? 127, um, which is my favorite contour brush because it's nice and fluffy because I don't really like a super sharp contour. I like to keep it soft. So the best way to do that is to use a fluffier brush instead of something that's like really stiff and precise. Just to clean that up a little bit, I'm going to use my Laura Mercier powder and just apply that to my cheekbones just because it's like, you know, it's a big day today. It's my wedding day. And then I use what's left on the brush. If you guys watch my videos, you know this, to just soften up around like temples and the forehead and just keep it looking as natural as possible even though none of this is natural. I've been here now for over an hour doing this. I really need to get rid of my peach fuzz. <laughs> it's back with a vengeance, I just did it. Dang. I'm gonna grab Amaretto. <laughs> the darkest blush I have. Um, this is the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop palette. Yeah. Um, I, this is usually in my kit, but I broke it out for this video, so... I'm just gonna take a tiny amount of that on my brush, like really tap it off. Keeping it on like the outer part of my cheek, rather than like right on the apple. This is gonna be almost just like accentuating our bronzer a little bit because it's it's a really dark blush so I just want to put like little bits I don't want it to be too intense keep it very soft that's the best thing you can do with blush if you're scared to go overboard just go in tiny little layers I would use one of these highlighters because they're like my faves um, but they're a little too dark for me right now so I think I'm gonna use another I'm gonna use opal by Becca which is actually probably my favorite um, it's perfect for skin tone like mine. It's just champagne enough, 
but it's just it's not like super gold so oh, like so nice I'm gonna put a little of that on my brow bone too oh, Becca's highlighters are the best I don't care what anybody says they are so good I'm not even like obsessed with highlighter but every time I use this I'm like like how can it get any better than this little bit on the upper lip I never usually put highlighter here. Oh, because I'm scared it will accentuate my mustache, which is exactly what just happened. This is what I do in a pinch. I have never felt more attractive than I do in this moment. Okay, I've got an option for a neutral lip, which I'm gonna show you, and I'm, then I'm gonna wipe that off, and I'm gonna show you the more dramatic lip. So, the more neutral lip is a combination of spice lip pencil, which clearly I like, and what is this called again? This is a Lip Stories lipstick by Sephora. I love this color. It's called Brunch Date. And I can never remember the name of it, but I promise I do love it. And then I'm going to stick a gloss on top of that because I want this to be like a glowy lip. If it's going to be, I feel like if you're going to go light on lips, it's got to be shiny. Otherwise, you can look sort of dead, you know? So. Oh, this is, I love Spice Lip Pencil. Like, it is probably my favorite lip pencil of all time. So then brunch date is like pretty much the same color as that a little lighter I friggin hate the smell of these though I can tell you that right now Ugh. luckily it doesn't last but like they stink they almost smell like medicine or something okay and then I'm gonna be putting this fashion punch this is a Patrick Star collection but I think fashion punch is a regular permanent is it I don't know but there'll be something similar this is a Mac lip gloss just a little bit of that this is the first option. Nice and neutral, but definitely like, oh, all over my teeth. Definitely a fall bride. So I'm gonna wipe this lip off and show you the second option. If you're a little more into the drama, maybe having like a very evening wedding or something like that, um, I'm gonna do like a darker option. So I'm gonna use Half Red Lip Pencil, this is by MAC, and then Chili, which is also by MAC, and one of my favorite colors of all time. So I'm going to go in with the lip pencil first. Okay. That one's so gray on me, probably because I had foundation underneath it, but Chili on top will warm it right up. So here is option number two with a more dramatic look. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. If you're doing your own makeup this year, good luck. Congratulations. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you do a trial run beforehand. And if you ever have any questions, make sure you get in touch with me. All of my contact info is down in the description box down below. And I'm happy to help you guys with any of your makeup questions. So thank you guys so, so, so much again. Please subscribe if you like this video. And I will see you in the next one.